This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers Discussion. But this is so, so much more. So pack up your stuff, sit down for a few moments because this is going to be an excellent discussion to be had. That said, if you're new to the channel, I know this video is going to do well. I, I don't need to tell myself that. I can tell you that 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button after the 10 minutes or 12 minutes or 15 or 18 minutes I take to explain this is up and then... You know what? Stick around. We do Oilers all day, every day. If you're an Oilers fan, great. If you're one of the fans of the other players that I might not be liking as much as I like my guy, great. Because I'd love to have you along for the tow because this video is inspired by the fact that there's certain folks in the uh, Dolany TV audience here who have been trying to pull a laugh out of me here when it comes to ranking certain players and how the Oilers should feel about Drysaddle and McDavid. But then, you know, they ribbed Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And that's a sore, sore mistake. Because, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to explain to you why Ryan Nugent Hopkins is the best, the number one left winger playing on a Canadian team in the NHL. Oh, that's a bold claim. It's a big old bad bold claim, but guess what? It is the truth, 100%. Let's get in to the deep dive because there is numbers here I will throw at you that make so much sense. It is absolutely undeniable the impact Ryan Nugent Hopkins has as Canada's or a Can the number one left winger playing for a Canadian team. Now, okay, oh, Tyson, you argued that Dry Settle and McDavid should be number one, number two centers. Where does Ryan Nugent Hopkins land on the list? Well, my friends, guess what? Elias Pettersson lands on my list of left wingers as well. Oh, you, you, you thought you were coming here for a hot take on Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Just wait till you have to see what I have to say on Elias Pettersson. Now, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, 61 points in 65 games played this season. Well, that does pretty good compared to a lot of the other left-wingers in the NHL franchises in Canada. The only guys outdoing him, well, that would be, oh, I'm going to give myself up right here, right now, you think about Kyle Connor, 73 points in 71 games played. So let me get a stat for you. Nugent Hopkins point per game, 9 or 0.94. Kyle Connor's 1.03. So a difference of 0.9 points per game. That's not much of a difference at all because you divide Nugent's or you times the games Connor played, which comes in at 71 times 0.94. Nugent would have scored 67 points which is a whole six points behind Connor, but my goodness, that is nothing to be made up too easily for Ryan Nugent Hopkins. You just wait. It gets better and better. I'm not even making proper English. I'm so excited, and that's the best part of all of this. So Kyle Connor, yeah, 73 points. JT Miller, oh, he comes in at 72. Wait, isn't JT Miller a winger? No, he's a centerman. He's a centerman, so exclude him. Sorry, exclude him. And that's why Elias Pettersson is listed as a winger. We'll get into that more in a moment. Elias Pettersson, 66 points in 68 games played, a 9 points or 0.97 points per game. So a whole whopping 0 .3, 0 0.03 points per game more than Nugent Hopkins. Oh, cry me a river. Uh, Pettersson's elite. Come on. <laughs> no, the guy's not better than dry settle. And there's not even a hope in the world that he's better than Ryan Nugent Hopkins. This is the best part. Oh my goodness. I cannot wait to read the garbage dumpster fire I have created in the comments section. This is going to be gold. You want to watch Canada erupt on Dolany TV in terms of hockey takes? It's going to happen right here, right now. I keep promising it and I'm just going to keep delivering it. So then you have Ryan Nugent Hopkins tied at 61 points with Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk, though, 
old Turtle Boy there played 69 games. Nugent Hopkins played 65. So Turtle Boy's got 0.88, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins has 0.94. I'm just sitting in on these numbers because uh, the Oilers' top line left winger is a lot better than that left winger they got in Calgary. Oh, wait, they also got Johnny Gaudreau. Forget about that guy. He is hot garbage. He's an honorable mention on this list, but the guy doesn't the guy doesn't even come into the conversation other than that. Okay? That's how terrible Johnny Gaudreau is at the current moment for the Calgary Flames. So, that adds the list, right? We've got I've got my top four. Yeah, okay, you can make your argument whether Patrick um, Nikolai Ehlers is your number five. You can make your argument, yeah, sure, Johnny Gaudreau is your number five. Whatever, I don't care about number five. I'm looking number one on this list, and it is Ryan Nugent Hopkins all the friggin' way, okay? that's We just got through the points. Now you go to the assists for a moment. I'll go all the way. I'll jump down my list. Ryan Nugent Hopkins ties Elias Pettersson for tops on this list in assists in the top four. I don't care what you want to say about the top five or whatever. <laughs> guys, if a guy's ranked fifth and we're trying to make Ryan Nugent Hopkins not number one because the guy in number five, good night. Terrible argument. Put it to bed. Why are you wasting your time? You shouldn't have even typed that comment. Okay, all right. So Nuge tied for best assist man on the wing in the NHL. All right. But problem is, problem is we've got the face-offs. And I won't get to the face-offs yet because I need to get to the shorthanded play. Oh, the two-way game. The defensive game that Nugent Hopkins is so good at and all these other guys on this list are garbage at. And, well, oh yeah, apparently Drysdale and McDavid don't have a clue what they're doing. But guess who does? The number one left winger in the NHL, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Ha 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 that's right, baby. So Nugent Hopkins logged the lowest power play goals against per 60 of any Oilers PK center at 3.78 power play goals against per 60 minutes. The Nuge. Guess what? He played a a hundred and eleven minutes shorthanded. So in two full games shorthanded, Ryan Nugent Hopkins gave up four goals against shorthanded. That, that's legitimately what the numbers are telling me here. That is bonkers. Now for instance, let's go to the ice time of defensive stalwart Elias Pettersson, who played a total of two minutes and six seconds shorthanded this year. Dude, did the guy even realize he was on the ice? Did he even know that he was shorthanded? Probably not. He was probably out there kind of like that Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisettle. Last 10 seconds special. Win the faceoff and go score a goal in the offensive zone. Well, I'm sorry. You're not even doing that with two minutes and six seconds shorthanded in how many ever games Elias Pettersson played. He played north of 60. I've already told you that. Well, that's, that's nothing. That's absolutely nothing. Terrible. Terrible for a guy who apparently is just the end-all, be-all of the Vancouver Canucks. They don't win if Elias Pettersson's not in the lineup. He played two minutes and six seconds shorthanded as their best left winger. That's that's brutal. That's really brutal. Now, let's go to Kyle Connor, who, you know what? To his credit, he plays a lot shorthanded. 74 minutes and six seconds shorthanded this season for the Winnipeg Jets. Guess what? Kyle Connor allowed 11.34 goals against, power play goals against, per 60. Let, let's just do some rough translations. Can I, can I translate that for you? Ryan Nugent Hopkins, 3.78. Let's go 11.34 divided by 3.78. Guess what? It's a whole round number. I was thinking it, you were thinking it. Connor allows three times the shorthanded goals while he's on the ice than Nugent Hopkins does. So his fancy points going out there scoring 73 goals or 73 points this year. Guess what? Shorthanded? The guy allowed three times the goals Nugent Hopkins did, which is eight. So technically, oh, you eliminate a total of those eight points that Connor had more than... Nugent Hopkins, he had 73, Nuge had 61, 
Suddenly, Kyle Connors sitting at 65 points, and he's a whole lot less special than he was to begin with. And my goodness, this list falls apart after number one where Ryan Nugent Hopkins is. Because guess what? You want to talk shorthanded ice time that's minuscule, terrible, absolutely ridiculous for a guy that is apparently so integral to the team winning? How about Matthew Kachuk? 15 seconds all year. What did they do? What did they do when they kicked all those players out of the game in uh, uh, January 11th between the Oilers and the Flames? Did Kachuk have to kill 15 seconds of a penalty? My goodness, how dare the coach make him lift a finger shorthanded? Wow! Wow, that's brutal. Wow, okay. All right, all right. You want more? Oh, you are you are not done yet. Ryan Nugent Hopkins is not done dominating the competition at left wing. And this is why Nuge is considered a left winger in my mind and why Elitas Pedersen is considered a left winger in my mind. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh, let's go to the face off, shall we, my friends? The face offs. Nuge's face off prowess, right? He's a centerman converted to a left winger. He found a home playing with Dry Subtle and Yamamoto. He finds himself on the wing on the power play. He finds himself all over the place on the wing. Well, Nuge took 404 face-offs this year. But guess what? That's a lot. Sure, JT Miller, a true centerman, took 718. That, that's a true centerman kind of number, right? The 700s where you're taking 10 plus a game. Nuge played 65 games this year, took 404 face-offs, so he was taking about six per game. Well, as a guy that knows how to take a face-off, and you're killing penalties, yeah, no doubt you're going to be the guy taking face-offs per game. And on a penalty kill, you're probably taking one every penalty kill. Well, all of a sudden you kill three penalties, you've taken three right there, and you take three even strength because Dry Settle got kicked out of the dot a couple times. There's your six. You want the over, you might get an extra one for that seven once in a while. Okay, there you go. That's why Nuge is the left winger. Well, guess what? Elias Pedersen. This pure bona fide centerman. Oh, Elias Pedersen is a number two centerman. Elias Pedersen actually might be better than Connor McDavid because he knows how to play defensive hockey. He knows how to do all this, and he isn't selfish and this and that. Well, Elias Pedersen, first off, isn't a centerman. He's a left winger because the guy took 141 faceoffs this year. <laughs> My goodness. How? Can the Vancouver Canucks elite centerman, top three in Canada centerman, Elias Pettersson, how can he take dramatically, dramatically 260 less face-offs than left winger uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins and not be a left winger? Hello, do you see the logic there? Elias Pettersson is not a centerman. Oh my goodness. I got to it. I got. I, I told you the stat that I was waiting to tell you. I got to it. Oh, it's game over. There we go. So therefore, no, Pedersen is not a top five center for Canadian teams. He's not a top centerman better than Drysaddle or McDavid because he's a winger. Oh my goodness. Oh, the Canucks logic falls out the window. Tyler, I can't wait to see what you have to say at work tomorrow when I break this to you if you're not watching right now. And I mean, if you're watching right now, I cannot wait to see your face in the morning when I get to work. So, all right, right? Elias Pedersen. And you want the better part? You want the better part here? Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins was an excellent face-off man for the Oilers this year. Like, just, you know what? Just top top-notch. Just a very good centerman. Did the job well and really got got faceoffs decent for the Oilers. I'm not saying he was stellar, but on this list he is by far the most stellar. At 50.7, he was he was above 50% in the faceoff dot. Let's go for faceoffs for these guys, okay? Elias Pettersson took 141 faceoffs. Yeah, not not a centerman. 41.8% in the face-off draw. That's the guy that drags your team to the fight. That's the guy that leads you to the playoff glory. No, that's not the guy. I'm sorry. If you want to talk about Canucks playoff success, 
You talk about Jacob Markstrom you, and Thatcher Demko. You don't talk that Elias Pettersson is this magician that just is the end-all be-all and is so much better than Dreisaitl or McDavid. No, he's a winger that's worse than Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Oh my goodness, reality sucks. Kachuk, he took four and lost all of them. Well, the guy loses everything. He loses to Kazian. He loses to Bear. He lo- uh, he loses face-offs. He loses top winger in Canada to Ryan Nugent Hopkins. I mean, what have I called him before? He's a loser. Oh my goodness, yeah. And I'm sorry, you might think that's a personal shot at Matthew Kachuk. I'm an Oilers fan. I'm not supposed to like Matthew Kachuk. Guys used to say much worse about Calgary Flames as Oilers fans back in the 80s. You can go back and watch stuff. Yep, that You can find that online. It's not hard to find online. Go ask an Oilers fan what they think of uh, Theo Fleury, all right? All right, all right. Me calling Matthew Kachuk loser, par for the course. Okay, Kyle Connor. We haven't talked about him in a while because I've been so obsessed with proving that Elias Pettersson is a left winger. Well, C- Kyle Connor took 13 face-offs and won a total of two. So, yeah, you know those magic numbers that, oh, he had that big points per game? That's about where Kyle Connor falls off a cliff. That points per game is the peak, and then it's like a stock that just went bankrupt <laughs> through the floor. The guy is totally useless in any other metric, right? Assists, Nuge beats him there. We've already talked about that. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, there's a reason Kyle Connor has all those points. He plays 21 minutes and five seconds average ice time per game in the 2019-2020 season. Okay, all right, all right, all right, I get it, fair. He plays a lot, that's why his points are up. And right, he plays some penalty kill time, allows a bunch of goals, so that's why his points aren't useful. Kyle Connor, I'm sorry, nice try, but you aren't it. And Nuge, how about at 2028? Okay, he's in there, he's in there. He is number two to Kyle Connor on this list. Okay, that's fair, and I mean, that's a difference of a total of, what, 37 seconds per game? Yeah, Nuch has got him shorthanded. And how about Elias Pettersson? I mean, this guy is just out there doing it all for the Canucks in 18 minutes and 32 seconds on the ice per game. Whip de frickin' do. The guy doesn't even play north of 20 a game. Wow. Wow. Yep. And how about this? Matthew Kachuk, even more. Like, this guy is the end-all, be-all of the Calgary Flames, the future captain, playing 18 minutes and 18 seconds per game. Top line time still, sure, but that's why he doesn't have an impact, is he doesn't have that short-handed time, he doesn't do anything other than play on the power play and even strength and still not do much special for just doing that and not having to focus on being a face-off guy or focus on killing penalties or anything like that. And how about this? We'll also make an honorable mention for a guy we haven't talked about in Tomish Tatar, who has 0.9 points per game, 16 minutes and 12 seconds ice time, does not take face-offs, had a 25% face-off percentage, and I'm sorry, you know what, the 0.9 points per game, same thing like Kyle Connor qualifies him to be in the conversation, the ice time doesn't, the face-offs don't, the shorthanded time on ice, a buck 55 definitely doesn't. So when it talks about who is the top left winger for Canadian teams in the NHL, the answer is none other than Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tyson. This is Dolany TV. I prepared you that we were going to go on for 18 minutes. How about 19 minutes of why Ryan Nugent Hopkins is the number one left winger in the NHL. I hope you decide to subscribe. I really do. This was a good video. I had a lot of fun. I have not smirked, smiled, and laughed about how terrible the other left wingers in the NHL Canadian cities outside of Edmonton really are. Ladies and gentlemen, you have yourself a great evening.